This is so much better, gentlefolk. We are honored at your presence and hope you will find peace here in our haven. I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. We have received word that alien life forms are creating problems at your mining facilities at Idle Mountain. Tell me more. Certainly, Captain Kirk. Not aliens per se. We have encountered what we believe are demons at Idle Mountain. Creatures surely emerging from the very gates of hell. Our god would not test us thus without reason. So we believe your might and insight are our god's method to help us discover what is going on. Aside from seeing demons, has any hard data been collected, any evidence I could see? The skeptic would consider everything merely anecdotal or unproven. My people will gladly tell you their own stories, so you need not hear it secondhand through me. What can you tell me about the mine itself? You're wasting the time of a starship capable of destroying this planet with campfire stories? No wonder you were dumped out here in the middle of nowhere. Starfleet recognizes our freedom to worship and believe as we see fit, Captain. I am surprised that you do not share that feeling. Rest assured that Starfleet Command will be informed of your rudeness. The area is exceptionally stable tectonically. And easy for our men. We need your help, Kirk. You may have no respect for our beliefs, but I hope you will look beyond that. Godspeed. Captain, the floor on this planet is very interesting. I wonder how useful it may be for medicinal purposes. You see a small explosion, and the Klingon's hand falls to the ground with a dull thud. I guess they don't make Klingons like they used to, sir. This is definitely not a real Klingon, Jim. This is a detached hand with some kind of circuitry in the palm, Captain. Captain, we registered phaser fire and an unknown energy beam. Is everyone okay? We're fine. Did you register any disruptor fire? No, Captain. Why? Are there Klingons down there? No, just an idea, Kirk out. Fascinating. I begin to suspect that we have stumbled upon something that the colonists would never have uncovered. What is it, Spot? I wish to gather further data before making a definite conclusion, Captain. You take the Klingon's detached hand. Various types of berries grow amongst the bushes. These are Laraxian berries. From what I remember, certain chemical compounds in the berry can be used to treat Nagarian infections. You have retrieved a sample of berries. I am worried about Brother Chubb. Jim, this man has suffered severe physical injuries to his head and arm. The wounds have been adequately cared for. However, he has developed a Nugarian infection. If not treated swiftly, the effects can be fatal. The infection can normally be treated with hypoditoxin, but there's none on the Enterprise. I may be of some assistance. The Lorexian berry grows near the mouth of the cave. Good! You have found the berries! I never dreamed that Starfleet would be interested. You are interested in my little museum of curiosities? Looks like a pile of junk if you ask me. Yes, tell us about these things. I enjoy talking, shall I? Mineral specimen, meteor, also skull of a small alien, a twist of metal. Or would you rather move on to something else? Very well. I can't imagine why, but if you have a further interest in any of this, take what you like. But please remember to return my treasures when you're done with them. Fascinating piece of equipment. Highly advanced technology. 
You see here, it seems to have been damaged, however. Take it to my workbench and let's see if it can be repaired. Mr. Spock, see what you can do about that hand. This machinery is delicate, but I have managed to repair the circuitry. The settings on the Ardak 4 have already been adjusted. They'll simply place the berry in the machine and the hypoditoxin will be synthesized. The machine synthesizes a quantity of hypoditoxin. We've got to get this to Brother Chubb as quickly as possible, Jim. Thank you. You're most kind. I headed up the party that sought to rescue Brother Candry. Without warning, the demons appeared and attacked us as we approached the mine. Can you tell us what they looked like? Like the demons that have plagued devout folk since before our people left the Earth. Huge, muscular demons with ruddy skin. Truly the manifestation of evil. The demons didn't follow you? No. Assume firing positions. This man is badly hurt and suffering from shock and exposure as well. It was a near thing, but he'll live. It appears to be a security lock designed to open the door when the correct handprint is registered. Sir, it may be dangerous. Let me try it. I think I was shocked, sir. That was definitely a mild shock. Ouch, that hurt. He's dead, Jim. The hand circuitry triggers a connection and the door opens. It is an alien life support system, Captain, utilizing geothermal energy. It is still functioning waiting for some sort of signal. Fascinating, Captain. It is a diagram of a lunar eclipse of this planet. See how the red sphere of the moon is casting a shadow on the blue sphere, Pollux 5. This must be a very old piece of work because this planet's moon was destroyed thousands of years ago. The machinery is waiting for the gravitational pull of another eclipse to activate it, an eclipse that will never come. And one other thing, Captain. This may also be a diagram showing the proper settings on that control panel. Welcome to our home. Thank you for repairing our Somnambutron. Stop. You're trespassing on Federation territory. I welcome you on behalf of the United Federation of Planets. Who are you? Where you come from? We did fix your machine. Can we write the repair bill off against rent on this land? So the Ferengi are not the only traitors in the universe. Yes, Captain Kirk, excusing the settlers' debts is an excellent way of ensuring that our people will be friends. We call ourselves Nauians. Thousands of years ago, we saw that meteor impacts were going to cause an ice age. We created this huge underground shelter to preserve our race, keeping us in suspended animation until the planet had recovered. 
We programmed the machinery to revive us at the next eclipse, but we did not count on the destruction of our moon. Some advanced civilization. Perhaps you can tell us about the demons. Some advanced civilization. There is no need for disrespect, intruder. Our race is old and powerful, wise in many things, like our guardians, for example. The demons, as you call them, are created by a machine designed to keep intruders away from our sleep chambers. It pulls from the minds of any approaching creature their most feared enemy and produces replicas to scare them away. For you and your crew, it was Klingons. For the Tellurites, a wolf demon. And for the other humans, a demon from their religion. On behalf of my people, thank you for waking us. I will turn off the machinery which creates our guardians, so that they no longer bedevil those with whom we now share our home. Oh, whoa! Alas! The key is missing. I can do nothing. Even we will suffer the attacks of our own guardians unless the key can be found. I implore you, if you can help, please do so. Jim, think about that skull we picked up from Brother Stephen. Now look at this alien. See the resemblance? A child? No, I see many differences. This must be what our people who did not slumber have become. Still, I would like to see these remains properly interred, according to the precepts of our religion. May I keep this? Of course. I think you will get along well with the Pollux inhabitant. I think I should return it to where I got it from. No, I want to keep it as a memento for myself. There is no need for violence, Captain. We are a peaceful people. Our patience is exhausted. Now feel our wrath. To meet your death at the hands of a race that could have been your ally. What a waste. Better luck next time. Load a previously saved game.